Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, independent climate system scientist. In this video and the next one, I'm going to talk all about Antarctica in the Southern Hemisphere. There's an enormous amount of water tied up in the ice in Antarctica. And if it was to melt, and it is rapidly melting, just depends on how quickly, there will be huge rises of sea level. We know that Greenland has about seven meters equivalent of sea level rise if all the ice on Greenland was to melt. West Antarctica is about five meters, so add that to Greenland, seven and five is 12. Add about 60 meters for East Antarctica to give you a grand total of about 70 odd meters, 72 meters, if all of the ice on these in these places was to melt and also there's a lot of a significant contribution also from mountain uh, glaciers. So just recently a paper was published talking about this enormous hole that was found between the ice and the bedrock on Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica. The, the, this hole or cavity is enormous. Antarctica clearly hasn't been to a dentist <laughs> recently. This uh, cavity is about four kilometers long by about um, 10 kilometers, um, four kilometers wide, 10 kilometers long. And the height above the bedrock that's been melted out in about the last three years, it's uh, based on the data, is um, 300 meters or about a thousand feet. So the area is about two-thirds of the area of Manhattan to give you an indication. The amount of the amount of melt, the amount of uh, gigatons of ice that has melted from this cavity alone is estimated to be about 14 gigatons. So considering that the overall melt rate from Antarctica is something of the order of 250 gigatons and rising, which is comparable to the numbers from Greenland, this one glacier, this one feature in one glacier that has appeared in the last uh, three years is, is, a, is, is just saying how quickly, how rapidly we're losing sea ice. So in this first video I'm going to talk about the big hole in Antarctica and also a little bit about the topology and bathymetry and uh, sort of uh, layout of Antarctica and where the risks are and uh, you know, also talk about some of the East Antarctic uh, melt rates and how we're do how those measurements are being made. And then in the next video, I'll go into the scientific paper, into the science details on how we can actually determine the size of this cavity and the changes from both um, interferometer, uh, synthetic aperture radar data, and also from ground or, ground or ice penetrating radars in this case. Okay, so this is my uh, blog here, Paul Beckwith, Independent Cl Climate System Scientist. And all of my work, I rely purely on donations. It lets me stay independent and be unbiased by, you know, any organization. So basically, I can say exactly what I think. Um, there's no holding back. So please consider making a donation to keep this work going. Now, this is my Twitter page. If you go to at Paul H. Beckwith, you can find my Twitter feed. And this article here in Skeptical Science talks about this gigantic cavity, two thirds the area of Manhattan, almost a thousand feet, which is 300 meters tall, growing at the bottom of Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about the scientific paper in the next video, but I'm just going to talk about some of the developments here. So first of all, let's have a look at the map of Antarctica. Okay, so, so here we have all of the different, uh, the altitudes of the ice. So this is the, basically the uh, peak, for about four kilometers high. Um, and uh, so we have West Antarctica over here, East Antarctica over here. This is the area in here, um, these, where Thwaites Glacier runs into the Amundsen Sea. This is the area where the cavity 
is in this glacier. And I'll also be talking about some of these areas here um, for East Antarctica glaciers. So what you can see is you can see the, you know, this trans Transantarctic uh, Mountains ridge here. And you can see sort of some of the topography and so on um, in this, this image. So we obviously know, you know, temperatures on the surface are very, very cold. It rarely goes above zero, you know. Um, so ice isn't going to melt on the surface. So we're going to get some mass loss from sublimation, which is a phase change of the solid to, to vapor. But most of the mass loss is because the circumpolar currents, the ocean currents are warm and they're going underneath the ice and they're melting the ice from below. A lot of the ice, especially in West Antarctica, is sitting on bedrock that's well below sea level. That's also true for parts of East Antarctica, but uh, just along the coastline, not going very far inland. So it was previously thought that East Antarctica was fairly stable, but this needs to be rethought. It's not as stable as we think. So if you look um, at just the bedrock, so this is, a, if remove all the ice from Antarctica. Now, if you don't um, add to that sea level rise from Antarctica, this is what we would, what we would get. So, so the ice would be sitting on top of here. Um, and what you can see here is anything green is above sea level, the greens and yellows and so on, and anything blue is below sea level. Um, the scale here is in feet, um, this is about a, a mile or, or so, um, 5,000 feet. So the light blue area is, is up to minus 2,500 feet. So you can see that most of West Antarctica is, you know, with no ice, we're talking about the, um, there's ocean water impinging all in this area. So the ice is sitting on top of it and the weight of the ice is pushing down and the ice extends down to the bedrock um, so as it's melting from below, it starts to thin and rise up and it's in, large amounts of it can be calved off. East Antarctica, the sea level goes in, um, you know, it's below sea level along the coastlines or some incursions in various regions, but it's not as significant, you know, although it's a larger area, it's not as significant as the, as, um, West Antarctic. So keep that in mind when we're talking about melting gla glaciers. Now, how do we measure, um, how do we do measurements on these glaciers? Okay, so this is, uh, once again, this is the area of, you know, going into the Amundman Sea. Um, and uh, this is the Pine Island Glacier, huge amounts of melt and flow, Thwaites Glacier, which is the one we're talking about now. So if you have a stable glacier here, you've got snow deposited on the glacier. Over time, um, the air pockets are squeezed out. It turns into ice via, you know, it goes into fern and then ice and it builds up and then we get ablation at this end and there's flow of the ice. So if the glacier is stable, the amount of ice grown equals the amount of ice lost. Now, this is the bedrock here, and if the, if the uh, you know, we're looking at the thickness here of the glacier, and it's dropping off here, and we get these ice shelves here. So we can measure it with radar. So the ice bridge program, you use downward pointing radars to measure the um, height to the ice, and you can look for changes. There's seismometers um, to measure um, to measure uh, vibrations as ice fractures and breaks off. Um, there's hot water drills to drill holes through the ice to see how the movement is. So if you drill a hole and then you come back and the hole's all being misaligned because of ice flow, which is different at different levels in the ice, you can look at the grounding line where the ice is sitting on the bedrock and how that can be retreating. This is a retrograde bed because as you go inland, it gets deeper and deeper, and that can, make the, um, that can make it more prone to melt, and then you have different measurements here of ice shelves, and you, in, you, know, you have submarines in the ocean, ocean gliders, ocean moor moorings, all these things doing measurements. So this is the ice bridge. If you, go to, if you Google ice bridge and go to this site, um, there's this article talking about the huge cavity, some stuff on East Antarctica, and uh, massive iceberg calving, etc. So this is a very useful site. 
So if we look at this article, the huge cavity in Antarctic glacier signals rapid decay. So this is uh, very recent, just in the last few days. And this gigantic cavity, two-thirds the area of Manhattan, a thousand feet tall, growing at the bottom of Thwaites Glacier, is one of several disturbing discoveries reported in this new study. Okay, um, research is expected to find some gaps between the ice and the bedrock but not of this size. This huge size and the explosive growth rate of this hole surprised them. It shouldn't be surprising. You know, it's big enough to have contained 14 billion tons of ice, 14 gigatons of ice. Most of that ice melted over the last three years. You know, if it's 250 gigatons of loss of ice from Antarctica per year, and that number is going up, then, you know, most of it is from down below. It's just thought, it's just surprising that 14 Billy gigatons of that 250 or so is just in one cavity on one glacier. Okay, so the cavity was revealed by ice penetrating radar in the ice bridge, which is the airborne planes with radars, a study that started in 2010. There's also data um, on sort of digital elevation maps, etc., from German and Italian synthetic aperture radar. These are the interferometer synthetic aperture radar. So basically you have radars, you know, each a constellation, a whole bunch of satellites arrayed. Each one is part of basically if you take the area of the satellites that are all connected and use and, and use synthetic aperture radar, it gives you a very high resolution because the effective size of the radar dome, if you like, is that whole area between the satellites. Um, so and the models, of course, don't show, you know, they, they, they just don't expect this sort of thing. They don't account for grounding line change. They assume it's stable, which it's not. They also have no idea about how to incorporate cavities because we didn't even know about the size of these cavities. Thwaites Glacier, so the whole Thwaites Glacier is about the size of Florida. It's responsible for about 4% of global sea level rise. In that glacier alone, there's about two feet of sea level rise. Um, and if that went, then that backstops neighboring glaciers that would raise sea levels an additional eight feet. Okay, so um, the grounding line is changing. Um, the, 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 the retreating is irregular. Okay, it's not across the whole front of the glacier. There's different mechanisms for retreat. There's different processes at part, various parts of the 100 mile long front of the glacier. Um, that, and that's the, the grounding line is changing. Um, and the, the, the loss is varies across the front of the glacier. So I'll talk about that paper in detail in the next video. Um, there's another article on the Icebridge site about more glaciers in East Antarctica are waking up. So this is the area here, um, and we have the Totten Glacier and some of the other, some of the other glaciers in this region. And this is the velocity of the glacier. This is the movement of the glacier in meters per year. So these areas here are over a thousand meters or over a kilometer movement. So, so the ice is discharging down these glaciers at a rate of over a kilometer per, per year, which is a huge amount. Now, if you take this, if you take all of Antarctica, then this is the region here that we've just been looked, that's, ex, that's ex, expanded here. And you can see the size of the loss of, of, of ice here. These are all over, a, well over a kilometer per year velocities. So they're speeding up. I mean, you look at the change over time and they're speeding up rapidly. Uh, ice bridge has also spotted massive icebergs. So basically what we had here is, this is an image of Pine Island Glacier. Okay, so this is, the first image is September 17th, 2018. Okay, that's this image here. Now look in this region here. Okay, this is the Pine Island Glacier. Uh, so look in this image and you can see what happened. Okay, this image is from November 7th, 2018. So this, the first one is September and the next one is November. So look at all the change here.